Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to a brand new Total War 3 Kingdoms Let's Play on the channel as we're going to try out the modded campaign using a collection of mods centered around the True B mod, 207 Turning the Tide. There will be a link in the description below that links to the collection of mods that I'm using. There is 12 mods in the collection. I'm only using 10 of them. I'm pretty much not using the one that nerfs Tall Tall's mechanic and also the one that uh, allow you to hide some of the UI options. Those are not really gameplay related. Well, the Tall Tall nerf is, but I feel it's kind of unfair to gut Tall Tall's mechanic, even though I'm not playing Tall Tall. I think part of the reason is certain players feels constantly being targeted by Tall Tall's abilities is quite annoying, which I agree, but that's part of the game. So we'll be suffering through that. Now in this modded campaign, 207 is our start date and we'll be playing as Sun Quan. So let's take a look at him. In the beginning, we have quite a bit of land. Uh, this is a little bit different from the overview we did a few days ago on the channel because that one just provided the overview of using uh, the Tribi mod only. Now we have a collection of mods. There's going to be, you know, compounding effects with different ones. And some of the map will look slightly different. Like Zhengjiang had just one county in the original one with just the mod. Now she has slightly more land. Uh, this also might change in the future depending on the updates of the mod. We're currently playing this on the 0.7 uh, version of the mod, so certain things are not complete. We're not at the 1.0 launch yet, so think of this as sort of an alpha build. Um, Sun Quan works just fine. Uh, there might be other things that's you know not perfect as we play the game, but regardless, I think the experience is going to be uh, a refreshing change from just the base game itself. Uh, as we try out sort of a historical Sun Quan campaign starting in the 207 setting. And uh, we'll talk about all the mechanic once we do jump into game. We probably have to spend a bit of time uh, in this episode, pretty much the whole episode, just digesting what we have on turn one. Uh, what's apparent is that we have a few vassals. We have Chen Lan to the north, Zhou Yu holding down the west for us, and Sun Ben, who is our cousin, uh, slightly to the southwest. And we own the rest um, and we are going to have sort of a vassal playstyle uh, built in to the faction as Sun Quan will have some of his background changed. Aside from that, the unique units are the same. We have the same as our father and our brothers. We have our brother's court. Uh, but in addition to that, we have a new resource called Authority. And there's also the adaptation of uh, Liu Hong's mechanic from um, Mandate of Heaven. And there's three different factions assigned to all your generals. There's the family faction, uh, those who are related to us. There's the local gentry faction, and there's the generals. And by balancing each of those, we'll have different bonuses and debuffs, and we can kind of consider how we want to build out our faction for that gameplay. Uh, we also have one new unique building, the Tax Collector, which will alter the support of those three factions, generals, gentry, and family. And there's also unique assignments uh, that can be used to uh, change the support for those three factions as well. There are going to be a ton of characters because we're using Make Them Unique, MTU. We're using TUP or Total Unique Pack. And we're also using We Are Different Generals or WDG, uh, those three main artwork mods. And also they change some of the general skills and items. Um, it's going to be quite interesting. Now there is a TUP modifier mod as well that tones down some of the abilities that were given out uh, in the TUP mod because it's kind of broken. Uh, so it's not going to be the same as if you're just using TUP. So if any differences, consult our mod list and uh, that will sort of solve your question. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all we need to cover here. Uh, the map is definitely very chaotic. There's a lot of factions that you can play in this modest start date. Uh, Zhang Lu, Gong Sun Kang, Song Jian even out in the west. Uh, we have a ton of vassal set up. There's two barbarian factions, Liu Bao representing the southern Xiong Nu, and we have Ta Dun representing the Wu Huan tribes. Uh, we also have a yellow turban faction in Xu He, some rebels represented by Lei Xu. Vassals of Cao Cao, vassals of Sun Quan, Shi Xie with his vassals down south. We also have Liu Bao's vassal Huang Zhu, uh, who is probably our main target early on, as if we're doing a historical run, we will wipe out Huang Zhu to avenge our father's death, as he was the principal party 
responsible for ambushing our father and killing him uh, way earlier in the story. Um, it's about 17 years later, but revenge can never come too late. Aside from that, the fictional character, the Bandit Queen, Zhong Jiang, has been moved south, and she's probably also one of our early targets just to pacify the south. We'll pretend she is representing the Shanyue tribes or something like that, because pacifying the Shanyue has always been a key thing for the development of Wu. Uh, with all that said, we'll be playing this on Legendary Legendary 40 Minute Battle Timer, so basically the usual, and China must be united. There is a cinematic that's pieced together from various different cinematics launched by the game, but there is no unifying background music, so it's rather silent. We'll just be skipping this. And we get a little bit of flavor text to introduce us to the period. I think we start the game in autumn season of 207. Uh, Yuan Tan's still alive, but barely. He's being pursued by Cao Cao's faction, uh, seeking refuge from the Wu Huan tribes, which would, you know, see destruction brought to them by taking in the Yuan clan. And there is a few things that's kind of weird. Uh, so I think because of the various mods that give different character changes, uh, including MTU, who provided the change to Lady Wu, Sun Jian is now married to someone with a different name, uh, Bai Xia, who we'll take a look at exactly who she is. But the others are working. So there's the marriage of Da Qiao, there's the marriage of Sun Quan to Bu Lian Shi, one of our future concubines, and Yuan Yang, also one of our future concubines. Uh, she is Yuan Shu's daughter. Yuan Shu's son and daughter did escape south and take refuge with the Sun clan. And Yuan Yang did eventually marry Sun Quan as a concubine. Our first battle is against looters. We'll get your economy grows. Very useful boost early on. 20% construction cost discount. Minus one turn construction time as well. Night Bestelment given over to... Duchy of Wei. I wonder if that actually gives us plus three morale or just they get it? Weird that we get this prompt. Uh, basically at this point, Cao Cao is thinking he will unify China soon enough. This is before Chibi. And he's giving himself the night bestowment to prepare for that moment. Um, we have quite a bit of land. We're in the dark maroon color. And the looter army we have to fight is right here. Wei Shu. Okay, a lot of... Saber Militias, a lot of Saber Militias, and uh, a couple of the Shock Cavalry, led by an uh, Archer Captain. What a weird combination here. The army facing them off, Panjong's force. Uh, so Panjong, I think, is a TUP character. So there is a unique item for him that has a, a set bonus, which should be active. I think it's just not lighting up, but I think it's there. 25% chance of capturing enemy officers post-battle. This is a reference to the fact that Pan Zhang led the group that captures Guan Yu uh, later on in the aftermath of the Fun Castle siege. Uh, his lieutenant Ma Zhong is the one who actually will capture him. So we have sort of a capture effect chain and shackle uh, to highlight that. I think he also gets a unique skill. Yes, cut off retreat, similar effect. Uh, as long as there's an enemy routing within 50 meters, we will gain well, everyone, right? Oh, actually, no, it's just us. We will gain 25% speed and 25% melee attack rate uh, forever as long as it's active in terms of having an enemy routing in range. Interesting. Uh, general of Atrocities, we get, let's see, 45 points of stats, 20 points of charge bonus for all own retinue units. Greedy, uh, that's not very good. Uh, relentless and Brave, okay. Currently a bit unsatisfied, mostly from this, I believe. 45 points desire for higher court, uh, it's pretty high. We have to set up our generals um, a little bit as we take our turn one here. Uh, joining him, Zhu Zhi, the administrator of the Wu Commandery, uh, Sun Jian's old officer. Rear scout, five points of morale when defending, only 30 points of stats, that's a bit sad. No unique armor items, I bet no unique skills as well. Yes, a very generic sentinel, but the traits are good. We have loyal, so same level 4 situation, but much better off in terms of satisfaction. 
dutiful which is another minus 50 so basically he will never have desire for higher office unless we have some other source that adds desire uh, basically minus 50 here minus 50 here as long as we don't have any pluses anywhere else he would have zero which is reflected right now quite useful and they also are joined by a mercenary captain this is not an easy fight but i guess we do get the garrison to help us which does provide some decent units. Against cavalry, it's not going to be the end of the world, I think, if we just use our, well, non-existent spear unit here, but I guess we get to pull a couple from here. We should be able to defeat them quite easily. Um, aside from that, we have Sun Quan in the capital with his lovely wife, Yuan Anyang, who has, I think she's MTU character. This is part of the item set, Yuan Family Jewels. I think we get additional family state money if we are part of the leadership, right? Prime Minister, Aero Faction Leader. 20% is not worth very much. The default or the base value for family estate is 2000 So 20% of that's only 400 income per turn. Now, granted, we are currently losing money, uh, absolutely bleeding cash, but uh, we'll fix that. And uh, this is probably not worth promoting her to one of those key positions. She is MTU, so she does have unique abilities. We have safe haven, passive ability when not under fire, health above 50, not engage in melee, passive heal. Uh, for anyone within 50 meters, it's a small amount, 23 healing, stops fatigue gain. And that part's pretty cool. Uh, just a support character. And we also have blooming beauty. Uh, so this is a two part effect. If you're within 25 meters of her, it's 20% speed. If you're within 50 meters of her, it's another 20%. Okay, so basically, if you're within 25, you actually get 40% speed, right? So it's like a speed up, depending on how close you are to her. And the own army also gets a 10% speed bonus regardless. Um, fast armies, I guess. She's a strategist, so it's going to be kind of weird. Uh, maybe horse archers, you know, kiting units with her at the center of it, providing small heals in case we exchange fire with enemy um archers but yeah that's in the situation where we're not under fire i think it will work out it's just an interesting setup we are fertile so i guess we can expect to see some kids even though historically sun chuan doesn't have kids until you know much later he's uh he has no kids at this point i think most of his kids come to 11 208 i think is his first son he only have about seven kids he lives very very long but um I guess there could be some infertility with him. Uh, not completely sterile, of course, but um, not very keen on reproduction compared to someone, let's say, Cao Cao with, you know, 20 plus kids. Uh, we also have our sister, which, you know, not much change, but some new items. Chief Handmaiden as a new item. Handmaid Guard available for recruitment plus six. Is there a recruitment cap on that unit? I don't think so. Why are we... Um, we can't recruit on the first term, but... Why are we getting a cap increase for it? That's weird. Unless there's a mod that actually capped the recruitment of the unit. Oh, I guess if you don't, if you're not playing as Wu and you want the unit, this item will give you the recruitment for it. That's how it's useful. Not that for us it's useless because we get infinite number. That's my assumption. Uh, there is a set bonus for her bow now. Heroin of Wu, 15% range armor increasing damage, 15% range block chance. Nothing too huge, but um, regardless, it's a bonus. And it's with the armor. Okay, and we get ourselves a sword. Sheng Xie. Sheng, Sheng Xie. Huh, not sure exactly the terminology. I mean, it's apparently one of the great swords forged by Ouyangzi, which is a famous sword maker during the spring autumn period. But um, 1.4k base 630. We are playing on uh, large unit size, by the way, so the damage figure might be different for you depending on your unit size. But 1.4 base to 630 armor piercing, it's not very good. The 15% armor is nice, but um, aside from that, not too special. I think she has the same abilities. Heartseeker is still her calling card. Yep. All right, so that's another army we have. And then we have an army here in Shuxian, in Lujiang. And we have Zhou Tai leading the way. Undying Vow is what we start out with. Unfortunately, we're not very happy with 
uh, Lufan here, and that's going to be difficult for us to become Oathorns. We're going to have to reset this. Any new abilities for him? Nope. So no unique armor, only unique art from Poli, either TUP or WDG mod, uh, but no changes to the character. Uh, Loyal is nice. Takes care of some of our satisfaction issue. He's only level three, so there's not going to be a lot of complaints. We also have an army here. Um, so our cousin has a slightly brighter flag with a bigger character in the middle. Uh, it's Swin, right? It's our surname. You find this down here. You find also seems to be just a artwork. No armor here. Same background as in the base game. He actually has quite a few bonuses on his background, which is quite interesting. They took away his drunk trait, though. I'm, I'm pretty sure he started out with drunk. They took that away, which I'm okay with. I mean, he did have a few episodes where he was drunk, but um, that's because he was drinking with Sun Quan, who is also alcoholic. Andong has armor, uh, so that means he is added probably with abilities of, as well. Indeed, rescue allies. So we have 20% speed, 10% damage three points of morale for everyone oh for every other general right it targets other generals last forever it's decent 10 percent damage we'll live with that and we also have a debuff ability um 55 meter range it's active it's active debuff so we have to use it and all enemies within 55 meters will lose 15 percent evasion 20 point of morale for the next 10 seconds. So it's like a better roar, I guess. Right, we get the morale damage as well as some melee evasion decrease, which is always nice. Pretty cool. Background bonus, just personal boost, a little bit of morale points, a little bit of melee damage. 60 points of stats though, uh, so that's lovely. Those are the four armies that's kind of sapping our income. <laughs> we have quite a negative treasury situation right now. Aside from those on the field, as we see here, we have quite a few characters on the bench, which is probably also sapping our income. Yeah, quite a few. And a lot of them are not uh, set with their skill tree yet. We can get the fresh tree set up. This is our lovely concubine, Bu Lian Shi. Sun Qian was obsessed with her. Uh, she would give him two daughters. Sun Lu Ban uh, would be one of her daughter. I think Sun Luban is also in the game, uh, but too young for them to be born yet, so not actually on our family tree yet. Uh, she would never become Empress. Uh, Sun Quan would actually not have Empress for a long time, but um, after her death, Sun Quan pleaded to get her uh, to get a posthumous Empress title. Uh, that's how much he loved her. Wisdom of the River. So just a generic uh, strategist with artwork and a small background difference. Only 30 points of um, stats. I wonder if this is actually her background in game. I don't think so, but the uh, five points satisfaction doesn't seem that huge. She is beautiful, which actually cancels out the five points there. So there is no bonus. Uh, there's a local bonus, I guess. So she's better off just use locally for uh, satisfaction boost. We can have her if we have enough army set up. We can actually have her on the field just to provide a little bit of satisfaction. Um, level one, that's pretty decent. She won't be complaining. Uh, we have our relative, Sun Yu here. Seems like just a generic vanguard. Yep, uh, it's nothing to see here. Even the background is generic. Yeah, more family members. Looks like generic for us as well. Zhu Ran, uh, the other Zhu clan in the Wu Commandery. Uh, not related to Zhu Zhi's branch, uh, but their branch is arguably more significant. Zhu Zhi is a latecomer who, you know, rides his relationship with Sun Jian to become a significant clan, but Zhu Ran's clan has always been pretty important. Apparently good as administrator. Interesting, because he's a vanguard, so I'm not sure about that. The there's no stat for a vanguard stat. There's no instinct on him. A lot of expertise. Arguably close enough. And also a burn buff. So I guess he is quite good as an administrator. But the skill tree is definitely... I mean, the, the base of it, right? The, the non-ability ones are still the vanguard ones. So I don't know if he's going to be a good administrator. It's going to be weird. Defensive skirmish, 25% um, speed boost, 10% evasion debuff, 
Active debuff on enemy, 30 second duration, 50 meter range. Mm. It, it boosts. I wonder if the melee evasions apply to ourselves or not. Like, it's weird to have a bonus and a debuff on the same ability, so it's kind of confusing who it targets. We'll have to test that out. And there's a Guardian of Wu. 80% range block chance, 80% melee evasion, unbreakable for 30 seconds. That's good. That's actually pretty strong. Um, we'll have to try to move his skill tree this way, but it seems like we can always pick up the middle skill. Even though it's not connected, so we can probably get an easy start over here. We also would want reach, so that seems pretty good. Uh, Zhu Huan, let's see. He has a unique armor, the Zhu family armor, head of nobility. Um, stewardship. Uh, but unfortunately, he has the skill tree of a general commander. Uh, the Gu clan is also a very powerful gentry clan in the region. Silent Magistrate. 5% income for all sources. Nothing too crazy here. Dong Xi. He is very tall. Yes, this is actually very accurate. Eight foot warrior. Uh, if you translate the the um, the unit of measurement uh, that is provided in the books, um, it, he does probably come out to eight feet. But the I mean, so does people like Guan Yu. It's just the wrong. Uh, it's it's not the wrong. Um, the, the author of Romance Three Kingdom just basically used the wrong measurements. Uh, but he's tall, right? If you have someone recorded as tall, even though if you convert the measurement and it doesn't make sense in a modern sense, he still know that he was quite tall. So we can just say he's like probably six foot plus, right? Which would be quite tall even for today's standard, especially back then. Um, stubborn, perceptive, interpret. So I guess good capture rate on him. Any unique abilities? We do have this bravery in tides. <laughs> this is a joke for how he died. He went down with a ship, which is why uh, he refused to evacuate the ship during a storm. Bravery in tides enable a stronger enemy, and then if the enemy is stronger, we get attack rate bonus, melee attack bonus, oh, melee charge bonus. We lose some armor and come out of control. Eh, eh, not sure. Yeah, not not so great. Uh, but the flavor text is there, right? Bravery and Tide for him. Chen Wu, Compassion in general, given a saw blade sword. Yeah, one of the mob did this. Chen Wu was a decent general. Um, I mean, he, he kind of shined in helping defend um, Sun Quan during the Battle of Hefei, but none of those battles turned out great for you know, Sun Quan's side. Fierce fighting. This is for everyone within 25 meters of him. Melee attack rate, melee evasion. That's pretty strong. We lose range block chance, but if we're all in melee fights, it's it's probably fine. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. Anything special with the blade other than damage? No, just damage. So in Hall, he should be young, shouldn't he? He's in the I guess he's he's our cousin. He's our, our uncle's son. But he's much he's our yeah, he he's, is our uncle's son, but the uncle is the younger brother of our father, yet he's older than us. I mean, it still makes sense. I, I don't know exactly how old Sun Hall should be at this time. He feels a little bit old, though. Uh, Chengpu. Seven foot serpent spear. We have a boot like version of um, Zhang Fei's weapon here. Makes him unbreakable, though. Wow. I mean, Chengpu being unbreakable just feels scary, given like how high of an evasion he has. Uh, mercenary Captain uh, unlocks the recruitment. So once again, because we're playing as Wu, this is rather pointless for us. The stats great, uh, the retinue upkeep is great, but um, doesn't actually grant us anything special. I guess if we're not high enough rank, right? Because there's rank requirements for the cavalry units. I think you have to be like rank six or maybe rank five. I think it's like one, three, five for the requirements. I think archers are one, infantry is three, and then cavalry is five. Um, just off the top of my head, it could be wrong. Haven't played the game in like six months, so definitely forgot a lot of stuff, but we'll slowly catch up. Uh, regardless, interesting items. We have the uh, dual cylinder mace, and let's see, this is definitely a, uh, Dynasty Warrior reference. Immune to fear and terror. 
I mean, it's a legit weapon. There are weapons like this. They're basically sword breakers. Uh, minus 25% enemy armor. Mm, yeah, I guess mace do destroy armor. It also makes sense if it's something like destroy enemy attack, like decrease enemy attack. Um, but regardless, not bad. We have, we have the fire bombs. Yes, we still have the fire bombs. Good. Also, he has his unique armor here. His uh, retinue will get extra ammo. One additional spy if he's in the prime minister position. Also satisfaction boosts. I like that. I like that. So that's additional to the five points relation with all their Han Empire factions, which is pretty much the entire map. And then 10% trade influence on top of that. Okay, this is quite nice. And he does have some unique abilities. Swordless meeting. Reference to the meeting with Guan Yu. Um, target generals. We will basically decrease... This is targeting enemies, right? Active debuff. So they're going to lose 10 points of morale, 25% melee evasion, 25% speed. It's a pretty useful debuff. The morale impact on it is also quite nice. Like we can compound it with some other morale debuff and perhaps just knock out a general. The cooldown is also really short on this. Also melee evasion debuff is always very good. Yeah. The traits are great as well. There's our minus 100% desire for higher office combination. Lu Xun, 24 years young. Thunderstorm. Combos with his armor. Give his army snipe. I guess we're getting ahead of ourselves in terms of destroying Liu Bei's army. He does lose uh, 12 points of instinct on this. Five flowers. What a horse. Um, it's not comboed with anything. A tactical map. 10 points of cunning. 25% chance of ambushing. All reference to him leading the Yidin campaign. Scholar General, 10% range firing rate for the whole faction if he's in the, you know, one of the key positions. Plus one rank for starting recruit tradition of fire. Resistant to here. Uh, I'm confused. Is that a typo? As in it should be fear? Or heat? Because there is a climate effect if you're in the south for some of the battle. There's like the fatigue to heat. Like resistant to fear feels weird. So I'm guessing it's heat. But it's just a typo. Uh, disguise. Hidden. Wow, we can just hide our units within 200 meters. And give them speed. 60 second duration, and then we can snipe out of that position using it. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, uh, micro intensive, but um, I feel like that's pretty nice. Ah, our brother in law, Yuan Shu's son. He does have the Yuan family fa uh, familial conflict skill. Does I don't think Yuan Yang has it, so like, how are we going to activate this? I have no idea. Maybe we'll pick up one of uh, Yuan Shang or Yuan Xi, maybe they'll live. Zhuge Jin, Zhuge Liang's brother. Ocean of Education. Okay, so experience boost for the faction, character experience for the army, another experience boost for the faction if you want to speed up leveling up, which I don't know if we want to do early on because um, satisfaction becomes a key concern. Some additional boost to income. Some more character experience. Tenacious Persuasion, some 15 points of satisfaction. I guess this counteracts some of the level up effects that he will bring just to add a bit of satisfaction to the faction. Um, yeah, not bad. I think eventually we'll have him in one of those positions. Da Chao, our sister-in-law. Da Chao's music. Oh, she has a Gu Qin to start. Okay. Five points of satisfaction. Nothing's changed. Yep, so same skills. Uh, Jiang Qin, does he have unique abilities? Frugal values, 15% speed, 10% charge, 15% armor. Um, yeah, he did die poor. There's a lot of generals who like did not 
um, you know, keep wealth and died pretty much with nothing. Um, Zhao Houdun comes to mind as well. Zhang Hong, Zhang Zhao. Guess we get new items. Excellent brush. It's not highlighting, but I think. Oh, that's not good. It's not registering his own armor. <laughs> that's bounded. <laughs> We're missing out some bonuses. I guess he's not going to make uh, make the prime minister slot because of this, this issue here. Signature blocks. Um, I, these, I don't know if they have come into style yet. Um, basically, I think I think it has. I think Han even used this. Uh, officials would bring this in front of them uh, to court. It's a style item. You see this more prevalent even during like the the Song Dynasty, where they get you know they get really fancy. It becomes like curved, and you can you know have different materials made of different bones or you know certain things for it. The replenishment boost faction-wide is really nice. Faction support, don't really care. Income from industries, at least they're registering his armor. Uh, I mean, once again, Zhang Zhao comes ahead against Zhang Hong. Ah, Liu Shang. So, another mate, not related to the Imperial family, uh, major clan in the south, will become in-laws with us in the future. Nothing fancy in game, however. Nothing. Nothing. Not even like a, I guess, surplus market. A useful assignment character. All right, so we went through the roster. Um, that took us like half an hour. Uh, and we're going to try to figure out what we want to do. I think the first thing first is we need to set up some trades. Uh, we haven't even looked at our mechanic. Yeah, let's talk about our mechanic. We have our brother's court. Uh, we have an air position that's available. We can pull that from our family tree, which is actually quite large. Um, we don't have Sun Ben's line. Uh, Sun Qiang is our brother our, our father's older brother he left Sun Ben uh, as uh, um, a son which is pretty much raised by Sun Jian fought with Sun Jian since the yellow turban days he's now a vassal of ours there's another son under him um, Sun Fu who almost betrays us when we were transitioning from power when our brother died uh, we have two younger brothers here who have all perished. Um, the transition period was rough. They were killed by, you know, local, uh, not technically rebels, but people who like almost betrayed our family, uh, assassinated. And then we have Sun Jing's line. I don't think Sun Jing's dead. I think historically he's still alive, but um, he, he's dead here. Uh, he's our brother's younger brother, a uh, family of three. Uh, I think there's another... I think oh, maybe there's only three. I'm trying to think. Maybe there's another one, but I think maybe there's at least three. Sun Jing is the third brother. I'm quite sure of it. Um, since, since he's the younger brother, right? The death ages are just way off. Yeah, the age is just, it, it's kind of wrong, but it's fine. Uh, he seems a little too old with this age setup. Um, anyhow, and then we have Sun Gong down below. Level four, you outclass a lot of our generals. We have this entire family with us, which is interesting. I mean, it depends on who you want as vassals as set up by the mods. Anyhow, we can have any of them be our heir. That's kind of the option we're trying to show off here. And we have a pretty big court and each of them have this little symbol, which classifies them as a general um, family member or a gentry member. And the gentry member, I believe, they're giving it to kind of, it's it doesn't always work. Like Yu Fan would not be a gentry. That doesn't make any sense. Liu Shang should be a gentry, but it's not. Da Qiao should not be a gentry. Da Qiao should be family. Uh, Lu Xun is gentry, the Lu clan, that makes sense. Um, who else is gentry? The Gu clan, the Zhu clan, that's fine, that's fine. No problems with there. Zhu technically not, right? They're not the same clan. These two are related. This one's not. He should probably be general. Bu, uh, she married us, so I guess family is fine. Uh, but but her clan, like the Bu clan, should be gentry. I guess once you get married into the family, you are part of the family. Most of them are fine. I think. The Liu clan can probably get a change, and then some of the generals can probably get a change. 
Anyhow, uh, we have a bunch of positions we can fill. They have bonuses depending on the level of the character, if it works the same way as how it worked with Sun Ce's faction. So like if you're a higher level character, you grant more bonuses. Right, so level one provides nothing. Once you hit level three, you get a higher bonus. And then if you hit level five, I think it's an even higher bonus. This is a spy one. Administrator. Okay, so we want administrators. Who is going to be our heir? So Sun Quan's background also got the change. Um, he has one administrator position, 50% income from him. That's the same part. And then tributary income, vassal gameplay. His skill tree didn't change, which is a bit sad. At least he has high authority. We don't need this. I'm planning to switch it to a, a administrator. There is a lot. A lot of stuff to do. Okay, so Panjan's not happy. We probably should promote him into one of the positions. He's also pretty high level. So this is at the Da Dudu position. But Zhou Yu's not with us, right? So it's kind of weird. We can't like give it to Zhou Yu. Um, I, I guess we'll just give it. I mean, we could annex him. I, I'm, Zhou, I'm speaking of Zhou Yu's faction. Yeah, we want to give him that satisfaction boost. The salary is going to hurt, but um, we're going to have to take care of that satisfaction anyways. And you can see the value change. It's a cumulative effect. So basically, like, you'll net how many positive points and negative points you have, and then it'll just add on to it. Max between 0 to 500. So it's still a resource buildup, not a snapshot. And the bonuses, it, it, there's too many things to cover. Um, essentially, I think for most of them, it's still higher the better in some cases like there's certain things we don't like right the upkeep increase the minus income from all sources but like the gentry will balance out some of that uh these two will decrease our authority by increasing what's called complacency which is negative authority and then family is going to increase authority to balance out one of them but we lose like administrator positions there's an increase in desire for higher office so I'm not sure like what's our desire level, right? What 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 do we want these points to be at? That's the question. Like what bonus is this bonus good? Do we care about 10 points of public order at the cost of losing administrator positions and then the huge increase in desire for higher office, cheaper recruitment costs? I feel like, you know, strangely enough, the family one is the one that we absolutely want to decrease. Even though it, it will provide additional authority to balance out the other two. And then of these two, the, the replenishment bonus is quite nice early on. I think this is the most powerful one with the five additional positions. Losing 10 morale kind of sucks, but all the income boost is quite nice as well. Uh, anyhow, who else is complaining? Who has bad trade combinations? Who's like not happy in their faction? I guess everyone's pretty happy. Panjong's the one that was red. Who's, you know, any turncoats? Gunning. So, like, we can sap people from our <laughs> vassals faction. We will do it. Like, you know, I, I'm am conflicted about this vassal setup. You know, on one hand, this is sort of the design issue that we run into as we get bigger factions. Is, you know, if you start out with so much land, first it takes forever to do a turn one. And also you feel like you don't have ownership over everything because, like, I didn't create this situation, so you know, you're not happy with certain things. On the other hand, if you divide up the land, like we don't have Zhou Yu to use. I have the position director of officers, which is Da Dudu, and I can't put Zhou Yu in it. That feels kind of bad. Anyhow, we're trying our best in the current framework of the game. Uh, Xu Sheng is also not with us. Xiao Qiao, well, that's his wife, that's fine. Ling Tong. Ling Cao's already dead? Yeah, I guess Ling Cao's already dead because Gan has already joined us. And Lu Meng, who's also surprisingly not with us. Let's see how much anti-spying you have. Plus 8. Okay, not too bad. We'll just shift some points over. The rate of growth. Yeah, not great. But um, I don't know how much 
the undercover network uh, additional points he has, so we probably have to wait a little bit. I might just pop another one. Are we going to discredit anyone? They look pretty unhappy. Maybe they'll just leave. Um, anyways, we'll do another one of these. And then we'll get the 25 points, which is enough with plus 8. I can get Gunny into my side next turn. He should come with some nice items as well. So we did a bit of that. Um, I would like to assign all the administrators before we do the trade deals. We have Faction Council, I guess, next spring we have Faction Council. We have the Grand Architect position still open. Someone needs to be in here. Who is that someone? It's not going to give any faction-wide bonuses except for this. So someone who's higher than level 3 is fine. Level 3 or higher. Who has the lowest satisfaction right now? Undone's at 30. Don't see is at 27. But don't see it is. We'll try to keep everyone with us. Like, why is Don't see family? He's not related to us. He's a general. That's kind of weird. Um, who else? I think Sun. Yeah, he's going to be at 27 as well. We'll get two spies. We get some under network gains plus one family. We'll do that. So two administrator positions now are available. There's no other turncoats, so we'll keep those open. And... No, administrators first, because that will actually increase our military capacity. And who is going to be our heir? That's also a question. Not her. Not her. So how come he comes with a preset skill tree, but everyone else, you know, don't have that? We're pretty limited on who we can use. I mean, is she considered family? That satisfaction bonus is quite useful, I have to say. It's not registering her armor, but it's also not that big of a bonus. I'm not going to cry about it. Right, she doesn't work because the beauty just the beautiful cancels that out. Any of them have anything special? I don't think so. Is he considered family that we're married to the sister? I mean, he's at least a commander. There's a satisfaction on that political tool. Let's see who's available. Yeah, he is available to be named heir. We don't have any good choices, to be honest. No one screaming, pick me. Yeah, none of our cousins would work, unfortunately. Yuan Yao might actually be the best option here. That's terrible. The minus four authority on that, plus two. These don't matter. This five points and the potential of like shifting him to like a high authority build up. And the fact that we can pick up nobility, dignity, flexibility. Yeah, super tempting actually. I mean, those are own retinue boost. There's nothing faction wide. 5% income from all sources is not worth it. It's not registering. And 20%, even if it did register, it's not good. Alright, so I, I I think we actually give Yuan Shu's clan some hope and be like, you're our heir for now. Until we get some better options. Alright, we get 18 points of satisfaction change for the post. For him, and 10 points faction wide from the effect. We'll give him some other items as well. Someone has to take the job. Don't worry, we live a long time historically. Alright, we want the redeployment cost eventually. Probably not right now. I think the assignment's good for now. 
and then if we get another point probably another starting rank before we get that one I don't think we're stealing people's items yet we are stealing dot house yeah it's not registering as a combo and we really could use this effect learn to play the Gu Qin. guess we'll take that I don't know I don't think that's actually that helpful I'm gonna pass on that we have a white rabbit as a horse it's becoming very ladylike with the Gu Qin I mean Gu Qin's a male instrument technically I don't think I care about that three points 103 yeah 103 is a nice number we do have our father's sword which I think goes on Sun Jian Dual G of Swiftness. Decent. Oh, he can have the Heavenly Sword now, can he? Or we can save it for the Tactician Design Set for one of our strategists. Like, six points is not going to change this a whole lot. Alright, I'm happy with what he has. This is going to go on cooldown, which we don't want it to happen yet. We want to figure out our administrator position. We actually need to look at our buildings. There are additional side buildings for all factions, um, so there's a lot of new buildings option um, that can have a little bit of military or income effect. It's quite nice. We should have a new tax building. Right, so it's free income. The only thing that's going to come at a cost is decreased support for those three different sides. We really can't resist this. I'm going to build it. I don't think we need the mercenary outpost. This is not a very useful building. We're not going to use the captains, so I think we're going to get rid of that and open up that slot. We are a small regional city, which is decent enough. It seems like the default buildings provide quite a bit of support for each of them. Eight points of family, six points of general, six points of clan. Nothing too strange. I think everything else looks pretty standard as the base game. Apparently, the harbor chain hurts the generals for some reason and encourages the clans. So does the industry building. Do we have any 15% um, corruption right now? Okay. And we also have the in-building chain. So I think private workshop goes here once we do demolish that. And we appoint an administrator. It's going to be one of our few sentinels. Just for the construction costs. Zhu Zhi. Chen Wu and Liu Shang. Those are the only three that we have. There's a few on the field, right? No. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, Yes and no, they're included already. We only have three Sentinels. Oh, Chengpu. But he is... Grand Commandant, right. Hmm... I mean, he can stay Grand Commandant, it's fine. Fu Zhi... Has a default skill tree, so I guess he could be just our Administrator. Armies in Administrator Commander gets additional bonus. Sure. Okay, so if he's going down that route, we're going to set up his tree for that route. So those are the two key ones. And then potentially five public order. I guess we're just going to go down the bottom. And then we're going to steal Sun Quan's sword so it doesn't go on cooldown. There's no peasantry income in this commandery, so we're not going to grab that. And you're going to be our new guy here. I mean, this is our capital, so additional defense for it. Sounds good. Lots of discount for construction. Sounds pretty good. Uh, assignment. 
These are our new unique assignments. Okay, basically hurts local commanderies, public order. I don't know why we would do that. I mean, I, I can. I mean, if you really wanted to lower clan support, still feels kind of weird to use that. So you can strengthen or weaken as an option depending on class, or depending on maybe what attribute they're associated with. But that's still weird because he's he's definitely family. He's affecting general. I guess I guess because he's vanguard, so it is tied to that. All right, Chen Pu can't be a administrator, but he can help us with assignments. So the construction costs set up, I think we'll definitely use him for that. We'll probably focus on Dian Ye first. Danyang Commanderies feels like, I mean, it's pretty built, but there's still a few things we can add. And all the side buildings. We can always cancel it before the end turn if we don't like it. If we realize there's something else. All right, so Dayan looks fine. Um, looking over to Kwai Ji, which would be our main food location. It's built quite nicely. Don't know if we want to put a minister there. Poyang's definitely... Oh, we only have a piece. We only have the weapon maker, which is a nice piece to have. But still. Um, Northern Jian'an. Linhai. Oh, we only have four commanderies. Is that right? Four full commanderies. Kuai Ji, Lin Hai, Northern Jian'an, and... Oh, Xingdu as well. We have five, and plus Danyang. Okay. Hmm. Are we sure we don't want to absorb Zhou Yu's faction? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not I'm not so so keen about this vassal playstyle. I don't think we need this. Lin Hai is probably gonna get our second administrator, especially a uh, sentinel administrator. Now between the two of them, does Chen Wu have any special things on his skill? Yeah, he does. So maybe we don't make him into a, a more just the nobody set up here. Basically, we don't want to waste, waste skills. Now, I think he's actually going to be moved out of... Yeah, we can't find him here. This is still the same issue after the latest patch where he just disappears from... You can look at him here. There we go. Uh, we start on the opposite side. What's well, fine. I mean, just a few more level ups and we're there. Make sure we have the most expertise possible. Looks good. And then, which one has more peasantry income potential? This has more food potential, I feel like, and um, Northern Dian has more income potential because I think Lumberyard outproduces the livestock. 160 versus, yeah. So because of that, oh, we don't have any more positions. We only have two. Yikes. We are only second marquees. Wow. Quite low, quite low. Definitely tax collection. Once that's gone, tax collection. Sing do. It's like a commerce slash peasantry in the late game. Right now, it's kind of like nothing. That's it's probably just going to end up being a food commandery. That's probably going to end up being tax uh, a corruption reduction as we get there. I, I think we're okay with the setup. The assignments are not done. There's how much commerce here? 160 base versus much higher here. I bet. Yeah, 260. So someone's going to have to boost. I guess our wife, she's low level, so she can gain some level doing this. Then what other assignment we have? We can boost satisfaction, also decrease corruption. It's probably most valuable here because we're actually 8% corruption, 8% of a bigger number, 3.5k. 
Uh, double check. Yeah, even though this is 15%, it's a much, much smaller base number we're working on. Yeah, it's definitely better here. Lu Xun. Tutor the family. Family supports. Okay, so we're gonna just do this. And then we're also gonna get Yuan Yao some level up opportunity while boosting our peasantry income here. And those are gonna be our Simon setup. Then we're gonna go get some trade. Oh, so many. How many do we have? Three possible ones? 570, 600, 624. 625 with Zhou Yu, but, uh, huh. I'm, I'm still debating what we do with Zhou Yu's faction. Oh, we can't annex him. Wait, can we? Oh, we can. Okay. The satisfaction hit, though. No, uh, the diplomacy hit. I don't know if it's worth all right, we'll just make some money from this. Um, let's see. We probably want per turn money. The other way around. He oh he makes a decent amount. Nice even one hundred. Ah, oh, ninety nine it is. Any other items we can look for? I mean, this is turn one. Anything good he starts out with? Overseer, kind of useful, but probably not useful enough to trade for. Yeah, we'll just take this. Is there any way for us to like, uh, 75 is high enough. It's above the 60 threshold, so it's not gonna improve anywhere else. All right, that's one trade deal down. Our other vassal. So basically our vassals are the ones who can give us the most diplomatic difference value. Uh, just whether we think the long term returns. Yeah, I think the 624, even though, you know, it's less. Right, we have our sister as a marriage bait. We have so much food, we should have yeah, we should have traded some food. We have way too much food. Even in Joe Yu's deal. Maybe separate is okay, because 4.5 is quite high, but here we can definitely like add one food in here. Before we request Oh, very little money. Yeah, very little money. Wonder if he has anything good? I don't Ah, he starts out with the Trader's Chest. I wonder if they're all given uh, Shizhi as mechanic or not. This is fine. We're just here for the trade value. 624 per turn. You know, going forward, infinite turns. Feels better. Should we do a deal with Gongsun and Kong? Start this uh, ill-fated relationship with the Kingdom of Yen. It's not going to end well for us historically, but uh, they don't have to know that. Uh, that's not the combo one. I don't really want him. Wrong one again. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get used to the UI. It's been a while. He is very rich. And thus, very generous. I can see why Sun Quan fell for this deal. Even though Sun Quan was the one doing the giving. He got all the immaterial returns, like, you know, the flattery and useless stuff. I oh, got some horses. I guess that's that's a good part of the dealing with the north. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's a lot of money. Okay, so we got our three trade deals. We are in four wars. Strangely with Zanba. We 
we can milk a little bit of relationship with anyone willing. Our economy is not great, so uh, anything we can do to uh, lessen. Uh, nah, we don't need it. We should spend some time to look at everyone's starting item. Not gonna lie, he. Oh, everyone feels, you know, pretty wealthy actually. He has one county. I have no idea how he has that much positive income, like or or the fact that how do we have such low income? Can we squeeze anything out of this? I mean, we're now positive, but we just hit positive. Oh, you're about to be wiped. I don't think Perturn is going to be wise with you, but Perturn food is going to be decent. We can get... Oh my god... Uh... Huh... This is making things difficult for us. That's really worth trading for. Unbreakable. My percent melee evasion's underrated. Don't care about this. Although 20% armor is also pretty good, but we have a horse that does the same thing. This unlocks a new unit we can use. This actually feels like, you know, game changing in a sense because it unlocks a new unit that we can use. So I kind of feel like we should try to get it. And we're going to count on the fact that his faction's most likely getting wiped. And thus we can maximize that and offer him some payment, um, maybe per turn payment. I don't know how long he will live right on this mod. So there is a small risk in doing this, but it's so low. I think we'll be fine. OK, we're going to buy this item, the commander of Hubei defense, just so that we can have access to a new unique unit for this gameplay. As for the sword that he has. Now we probably should just come here. Maybe we won't be able to get the sword. Wait, isn't this Lu Ji's weapon? And isn't Lu Ji with Zhang Liao? Why does Liu Bei have it? Wow. So many cool items. We looked at yours already. Ah, they have Xu representing the High Empire. Okay, I can buy that. Oh my god. A burning effect. We gotta buy that. Play to Xiangyu as well. Zhao Zhao's staff. Okay, the burning spear is calling to us. This is also very good. Although I'm not sure if a commander could wear this. Even though it does give commander stats. This also feels like a must buy. Destroy treachery, yeah, I mean, getting new units always nice, but gem peacekeepers. Hmm, there is so many things that we would want to buy. There's at least two things we really want. This for the faction, although probably not so keen, it's not so important. This, this feels... Like, no amount of silver weaponry is going to make me feel like we overpaid or anything like that. I don't want to do per turn with the Han. Can we get... Uh, no one really important. 
No, we're gonna do we're gonna do lump sum. Alright, we're gonna get ourselves a burning spear. Anyone else have a treasure for us? Uh, capture rate. It's good. But not gold item good. I feel bad for Liu Bell. It doesn't have anything. Why is it not equipped on him? I guess maybe it was his father's. Can we honeypot anyone? Is there anyone that can be honeypotted by our daughter, uh, our sister? We're not playing Sun Jian anymore. Do you guys start with anything cool? He's not holding his bell, but I bet he's riding his elephant. He's also not equipped with his bow either. Interesting. Plus six charge speed. Eh, nothing close to burning spear. Oh, there is a Shaima faction. Where is he? Is he farther south? Mm. Useful. But I think we will save our resources to trading for gold items right now. At war with him, so nothing there. Crow's beak, yeah, not that great. He already traded with him, but he still has. Quite a few things. I mean, this sword, I guess Unbreakable is not worth trading for. Yellow turbans. I think it comes down to the High Empire again with all those goodies. Chen Peacekeeper? I'm super tempted about that. Okay, so we go back and try to trade for that Chen Peacekeeper recruitment item. This right here. I don't know if we have enough to get it though, without giving up any of our gold items. We can throw this in. It's a pretty nice sword, not gonna lie. And then it's like a huge amount to make up for. Unless he thinks one of these received marriage is hugely positive, which is not the case. Yeah, I don't think we have enough to get it. I mean, Chen Peacekeeper is the cavalry version. It's nice, but maybe we just say no to it. It's just not gonna happen for us. Pretty happy with what we did get though. Alright, the Southern Xiongnu wants to give us a deal. We're happy to take a deal. Yeah, everyone feels pretty rich. Okay, we nailed it. Wolfong Tongyi. 
0.6 though. Not enough to really get paid. Alright, that's all we can really do through diplomacy, but we did get our income up despite not, you know, disbanding some armies, which we probably still have to do. We have this fight now. Panjong, guess what? You get a spear. Um, do I want to give up my father's horse? This is combination. It does help him a ton. Uh, do we need that much help for this first battle? I'm not sure. All right, we got the ancient silver sword, which is the one we were looking for. We'll take. We'll, we'll just put it on ourselves. This gives additional authority. Which in turn translate to satisfaction. Alright, we'll give him his skill points. Ooh. Only get three clicks. I kind of want the roar. But we also kind of want these two as well. The roar would be more useful for this battle. And then we pick up this first. We'll do movement later. And then we'll just get this fight going. Wow. Wait, this is a decisive victory? I don't I don't feel like it's a decisive victory. Wait, this is a wrong garrison. Oh, is it? Was I looking at the different garrison? I was looking at the city garrison instead of the county garrison. Okay, I mean, that's fine. Okay, I mean, we don't have any anti-cavalry in this setup, but somehow we are heavily favored. We're, we outnumber them, but most of them are cavalry, so I don't think that counts. Anyways, we'll fight this. We'll test out our fire spear in action. Can't be too bad here. We have a roar, we have Flame of Phoenix. So even if we get swarmed. Hey, I was wondering if Jujur was gonna say anything. Okay, the reinforcements will come later. We are gonna use these. We'll put them at the tree line. We'll also start a fire in here if we can, and then we'll put this kind of off to the side so they won't be interested in capturing it. Um, we don't have any range units, I just realized. They don't have any range unit either, so that's not very useful. Okay, no one has formations, so if we get run over by the enemy cavalry, we're in really big trouble. I can bait a little bit. Wait, where are the enemy? Uh... Concerning? Oh, there we go. I was like... Where are they? Alright, now th there's our range units. We're going to put them right here, slightly visible, so we get a duel. <laughs> Doesn't want to face our burning spear, which, you know, visually just looks like the, the gold um, generic spear. Obviously, we're not going to create a new model for it, uh, but the effect, obviously, combining existing effect, uh, it's what mods do, and uh, it's going to make him super strong. We want to bait the enemy to chase us. You know, we're trying to set this trap over here. Come on, friends. Give chase. There we go. We got one chasing us. One's good enough. 
They're faster than us. They'll probably catch up, actually. We'll have to roar and uh, flame the Phoenix our way out. Oh, there is something. We do have to walk away from um, our trap. Roar of the Beast, Flame of the Phoenix. We only have two morale right now. If we flame, yep, there we go. And they route. The Flaming Spear also helps here, because there's a 15 point morale hit on it. So we can route them one by one. We will take a bit of charge damage, which does hurt. We have to chase. Can't let them recover. Although the speed difference is showing. We took 4k damage, it's actually quite high. I don't know how we can encourage them to come chase us though. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to do much. There we go, got another one chasing. I want all of you guys to chase me. I'm injured now. Still not interested? He only had 19k health? Maybe we don't start out with 25k. It's not custom battles, so there's a chance, you know, the starting value is actually different. Depending on your actual resolve stats. They're finally coming. Alright, this is good. Archers have auto fire on, yes. Alright. We have some units visible, so they see at least some of them come over. And hopefully they bump into that. Get ready to counter charge. They're gonna loot pretty hard at this side. We'll try to surprise them when they do. Wanna see our firing range? Let's circle in. Now the melee cab's not gonna take a lot of damage. Still doesn't want to duel us. We're gonna pull into the forest. It's okay, these retinues will get injured. It's not a problem. Alright, we're here to stop the flank on the left side. Yep. Still a lot of them coming through. We'll help out over here. I'm trying to, I mean, I'm probably disbanding most of them, so maybe we don't need to be this careful with them. I'm gonna light up the forest on fire. I know we're still in the forest, but that's okay. What are we doing here? Oh, they do have one archer. They have an ca archer captain, that's right. Alright, fire has been set. I'm gonna reset here. mainly to decrease people's morale, and then we can just roar on them. Speaking of roar on them, I'm gonna send him over. Alright, that cluster is where we're going. That should route all of them. Mm -hmm, that guy escaped. Alright, let's try to kill their general. Mm -hmm. 
众降云端。快快快！ All right. If he routes, I'm sure the units are going to route too. Still getting chased around. So I'm recovered. Hasn't really burned to us yet. We're fine. Try to get him to route. That should be the last one. See if we can get the kill on him. No, we're too slow. I mean, with charge speed, maybe we'll catch up to him, but I doubt it. Help us out here. It's too slow. I think that's it. Army loss kicks in. Victory? There we go. Yeah, we had just way too many troops. But most of, I think we're disbanding pretty much everyone. We did all our diplomatic deals already, so we can tone down the armies and improve our economy for a little bit. That's quite a bit of authority post battle. We're getting it in the hundreds for such a small army. That's an encouraging sign for um, maintaining high authority, which also grants different bonuses. Is it because he's a general, so we get general support? We'll have to try to learn how that works. Yeah, we're going to pick this up naturally. We're not going to save it for anything. And with that, I think we'll end our first episode. It's a uh, slightly longer than uh, usual episode. We have not moved past turn one just because there's so much to digest. Um, we still haven't really, you know, messed with our other armies yet. Some of them are going to be disbanded. We're going to regroup some of the generals. Like we don't want people that doesn't, you know, if you can't be in harmony with Zhou Tai, you can't be in his army because we really need a fast Othorn so that he can start getting his uh, Undying Vow. He's probably going to end up with the Burning Spear. Um, he's not really that great of a general killer, but you know, with Undying Vow uh, combo making him really good at killing regular troops um, and then getting a good spear for it. Uh, he doesn't have any slam abilities. He's he's good, but there's limitations to how good Joltai is. Uh, so giving him a better weapon should definitely help him out. And we'll reset everyone, see where we actually need an army. We're fighting Zhang He here. Uh, Zhang Hao here, I'm sorry. Uh, Zhang He is in the north. He has quite a bit of land. One, two, three, four, five. He has, he has quite a bit of land. We probably want to unite Guangling and then, you know, take Hefei. Even though we should be targeting him, but we don't have Zhou Yu. See, we're going to see if we can maybe steal Ganning and steal a few more of his characters, where it's only his family, which is him and Xiao Chao left. We'll take the diplomacy hit and just annex him. That way we have Zhou Yu, and also we have Poyang, which is a rather lucrative commandery uh, that we can use and go from there. So, hope you guys enjoy this one. Uh, very excited to return to Three Kingdoms, and uh, we'll continue next time. Until then, bye!